watch USL Championship Soccer, you will. That only makes sense on Star Wars night for the Indy 11. They may need the force to get past the Charleston Battery Night, the defending Eastern Conference champions, and the Slayers of Lou City on Tuesday night. We'll show you those highlights in a matter of moments with you pitch side here at Carroll Stadium alongside Brad Hodder. My name is Greg Rakestraw. Thank you so much for joining us. The Indy 11 fresh off the heels of, yes, a national television appearance on CBS last Saturday. Wasn't exactly the impression they hoped to give. A 5-3 loss at the hands of Lou City. In five matches played, just one win, one draw, three losses so far. What's starting to kind of creep in here for Sean McCauley's team with the Indy 11, Brad? Well, I think it's gelling. You've got, you know, not just a new coach, but new players and a couple new ones in tonight. So it's just getting everybody on the same page. Well, three goals is a great thing against Lou City. Five goals is the problem. Wilson Harris has been on a tear. He has three last week. He has seven so far this season. Yeah, ridiculous. He plays a, a hand in four of the goals. Loose City is as hot as Wilson Harris is. Back-to-back five-goal performances. Now, obviously, the star for Indy, Jack Blake. Two goals in that, one from the spot. One from a beautiful series of passes all the way from Yannick Odell to Sebastian Guenzati. Blake has been tremendous. He's tied for third best in the league in goals so far. What sort of season has Jack had to this point? Great. I think uh, with uh, his flexibility, he's been moving forward more in the lineup. Leads in shots, leads in chances, leads in goals. Now, when Indy and Louisville played last week, Louisville was unbeaten. That is no longer the case because they had to go to Charleston on Tuesday night, a match that was televised on CBS Sports Network. Yes, it's a tough turn, but as the Indy 11 know from last year's playoffs, Patriots' point is getting ever more difficult to win at. The battery, they are unbeaten through six after beating Lou City 3-2 on Tuesday. Yeah, and this stretches back to last year. They're unbeaten in a long string, and we talked about Wilson Harris being hot. Nick Markanik, just as hot. Those two players, the only players in the league that have scored more goals than Jack Blake has so far this season. Ben Pierman has another fantastic team on his hands in Charleston tonight. Yes, there's a bit of revenge on the minds of the Indy 11. Their season ended in Charleston last October. Starting lineups, opening kickoff. Come your way next from Carroll Stadium. It's Star Wars night for USL Championship Soccer. AES Indiana is dedicated to providing you with smart energy solutions that power our lives. Our energy efficiency programs help you save energy and money. From rebates on lighting and smart thermostats to appliance pickup and recycling, you can take advantage of cleaner, more cost-effective energy solutions right here, right now. IPL is now AES Indiana. We are accelerating the future of energy together. At Indiana Members Credit Union, we're invested in more than just your finances. We're invested in your future, the future of your family, the well-being of the community you live in, and in those who dream big. Until those dreams become a reality, any bank can give you a loan or open an account. At IMCU, we care about more than just dollars and cents. We care about doing things that make sense, and investing in you makes good sense to us. Four season tickets are on sale now. Go to indie11.com forward slash tickets today. Find it, try it, paint it, love it. Find it, try it, paint it, love it. Find it, try it, paint it, love it. <laughs> Find it, try it, paint it, love it. Find it, try it, paint it, love it, love it, l l love it, love it. Tonight's match is presented by Community Health Sports Medicine. Exceptional care simply delivered. And by your Central Indiana Ford dealers. Your Central Indiana Ford dealers are a proud sponsor of Indy 11 Soccer. Visit your local Ford dealer today for great deals on your favorite Ford vehicle. 
Speaking of those Central Indiana Ford dealers, they bring you our starting lineups for this evening's contest. Let's start with the home side, the Indy 11. Augie Williams, after two tremendous years in Charleston, 15 goals plus in each of those seasons, he now is playing for the Indy 11. Of note, no Cam Lindley in the 18. First time in the last 41 matches for the Indy 11. He is not available due to injury. More on that in a moment. We touched on Nick Markanik for the Charleston Battery. He has a very capable strike mate in terms of Indy Myers. He was the golden boot winner in MLS Next Pro a season ago. Yeah, and, and not only can a kid finish, but also he's a great playmaker for Markanik. Sebastian Guenzani stands over the select soccer ball as we are ready to go on this again absolutely gorgeous night you want to let fans know who the referee is for today's match that is greg dopka out of schaumburg illinois conant high school went to rose holman uh institute of technology and then has made a great career for himself as a center and he played at rose holman who was his head coach at that time that would be myself but he will call it fair and balanced down the middle, no doubt about absolutely, that. Absolutely, absolutely. Thanks for joining us for Indy 11 Soccer on my Indy TV and ESPN Plus. And Yunus Budati, a target getting forward from that right back position. Blake, it's been that type of year for him where in a ball where his back is two goal 20 yards out, he splits the uprights. Again, he has been on quite the tear, has the native of Nottingham, England, also in his second season with the boys in blue. Yeah, he's been on a tear as well as Budati. You mentioned him. He's that first target here right off the kickoff. He's been so effective in dancing the end line and sliding a ball back across the middle. As Grinwis resets that and a foul is whistled against the Charleston battery. Let's get to our injury report. Brought to us by Community Health Network Sports Medicine. Official sports medicine provider of the Indy 11. Diego Sanchez out again. Aiden Quinn is out. That is a long-term injury. We hope to see him back at some point in time as we get closer to summer and as mentioned he had started the first five matches cam lindley played 34 of 35 last year only one he missed the league told him he couldn't play he had accumulated eight yellow cards he is out due to injury this evening both midfields tremendously strong even with lindley's absence oh this is gonna be a great game there's so many talented players on the field tonight Blake, Max Schneider, Tyler Gibson, that trio for Indy. We're going to get to what is the engine of this Charleston team in the midfield in a matter of moments. But let's get to the keys of this match, which are brought to us by your Central Indiana Ford dealers. Proud sponsor of Indy 11 Soccer. Coach, take it away. Yeah, for Indy, just defensive discipline. Got to start finding that groove defensively. And then create wide problems. Aaron Malloy, we'll talk about him in a, in a bit. He is a problem solver. If you can create wide problems, you can pull him out of the middle. They're so effective when he's that front screen to the back line. On the flip side, now what are the battery focus on in tonight's game? This team was built very, very well. Technical restarts. They've got so many technical players, quick technical players that are willing to take players on in 1v1 situations. They earn a lot of restarts because of that, and they're so dangerous on their serves. And then press to repossess. Watch how they score squeeze the ball with their front and their midfield and then they look to get a turnover generate a repossession and quickly create an opportunity off of it again our keys brought to us by your central indiana ford dealers charleston indy played in the 3-6 matchup last year in the opening round of the usl's eastern conference playoffs what it was mel brooks that said no one expects the spanish inquisition no one expected five nil to be that score Charleston thumping the Indy 11 in that game in October. Opportunity began to develop for the Indy 11, but now we will go back to the foul. Leland Archer drew the foul along the back line for Charleston. And a restart coming outside of the 18 for the visitors tonight. Yeah, a great play by Leland Archer. He knew the tackle was coming, and he still delivered a great ball to Gutierrez. Archer is Mr. Charleston Battery, his seventh season with Charleston. Good sliding effort by Chapman Page, but again, once Indy had possession, that ball was going back to the previous spot because of the foul against Indy. Indy had a dominant win of their own against the Battery last year in early June. Brad and I were recounting that match a bit earlier. 
off the air. And Leland Archer was a factor in that as he commits a foul there. Indy trying to restart quickly. And we'll let things calm down for a moment. But last year in the first match of the regular season between these two teams, Leland Archer was called for a penalty inside of the box and a red card and a denial of a goal-scoring opportunity. 15 seconds in, Indy played a man up for more than 93 minutes in that match at Patriots Point a season ago. And you think uh, in, through training, Leland Archer and Augie Williams have had a few battles over the last couple of years? Of course, the job that Ben Pierman has done to improve the fortunes of this Charleston team from 2022 the last two years has been rather remarkable. Truly incredible considering the talent that they lost last year. And no Fidel Barajas, no Augie Williams, no Trey Muse. Of course, we know well from his days at Indiana University. Yet they have won three and drawn three so far this year. Udati played out wide, plays it across. Ball headed away. Schneider has a hit, couldn't steer it on frame. It'll be on Gibson now to try to recycle things for Indy. Went in doubt, fine. Boo Dottie angling towards that byline. Drew a penalty in that scenario last week for Indy. Good touch by Chapman Page to keep it into the mix. Well, I love that restart from Blake, just putting it into the space for Boo Dottie to get to the end line. Trying to potentially sneak one past the keeper from distance was the Indy 11. Nothing doing there. Restart coming here for the Charleston Battery. You look at Aiden Stanley. Aiden, of course, in from Miami this year for the Indy 11. Sports of the match brought to us by Sports Deck HQ. Indiana winning is in our DNA. More information, visit forthewinners.com. Well, we never kind of got back to this point. I referenced the Indy 11 midfield and said, hey, as good as the Indy midfield is, Charleston is every bit as good. Chris Allen, Aaron Malloy, Emilio Icaza. They are tremendous. They're tremendous all over the park of the battery, but especially in the center of the park. Yeah, Malloy is a next-level player. I mean, he just does so well to read the game defensively, not only for himself, but in positioning his teammates. And he's a playmaker. He's a playmaker. I think he's got something like 17, 18 assists in the last two seasons. Ben Pierman was the head coach at Memphis 901, and several of the pieces that he put together there a couple of years ago over the course of the last two seasons now have joined him in the low country. Malloy played in League One with forward Madison in 2021. Third year in the championship. He's been tremendous at every step of the way. It's Gutierrez that put some pressure on Yannick Otel. Pressure applied here by Stanley. Off of Segbers and a throw in coming here for the Indy 11. For Segbers, even though he doesn't play that midfielder role, much like Budati, he will get into the mix offensively. Segbers was a late season transfer from Miami to Charleston last year. What has made Segbers such a quality player at every step of the way? And, and I think that's why, you know, Pierman was so high on bringing him in to Charleston. He had him in Memphis. And you take a look everywhere we've seen him, Memphis, Miami, in here. It has been this aggressive, relentless pace going forward. He just causes so much stress on a back line. It will be a corner kick on the deflection. Our corner kicks are brought to us all night long by our friends at Wilson Kehoe Whittingham. It is Schneider. One of the new faces for the Indy 11. In from St. Louis City, SC2 a season ago. Driving ball all the way to the edge of the 18. Gibson could not get a controlling touch on it. Great find by Boo Dottie to track down Jack Blake. Gibson wearing the captain's armband tonight in his second stint with the Indy 11. Plays Budati out wide. Couldn't get to it in time. Of course, Tyler spent the last three years with Lou City after spending the 2019 and 2020 seasons with the Indy 11. And you, you can see this is one of those scenarios where you got a hot player, a player that's playing well, and Budati has been so effective getting to the, the end line and sliding that ball across. They're looking for him on restarts. They're looking th uh, for him through the run of play. 
Well, let's also touch on this, too. You know, in the early stages of the season, there's not much the way of midweek matches. Charleston has played one of the rare ones so far this year when they played on Tuesday. So it is a bit of a fresher in the 11 team tonight. What sort of factor does that play at this early stage of the season? Well, you look at it right now, they're on the front foot, which is which is great. You know, that you spend a whole lot more energy when you're reacting and defending than when you're being proactive and attacking. So you got a team that played midweek. You're putting them under. You're making them empty a bit of the tank right now. That can pay dividends later on. Tega Ikoba, one of the handful now of MLS transfers that have made their way to this Indy 11 roster, comes here by way of the Portland Timbers, draws the foul. Good combination play here. Blake trying to find a pocket of space. Worked his way around Aaron Malloy for a moment, but then commits the foul. And in the heat map of this game has been in this end of the park. That's the good thing, but not really a threatening moment on, uh, on goal yet for the Indy 11 in the opening 10 minutes. Yeah, we, we've talked about this a number of times, too. When, you, when you're having this kind of success and, and the heat map is, is slanting your way and you're in and around your attacking third for a significant portion of the match you have to get rewarded because at some point then the momentum just swings Nathan Dos Santos last saw him with the Pittsburgh River Hounds playing the left back role tonight for the battery Charleston has played the most matches so far of anybody in the league this is their seventh tilt of the season touch last by Nick Markanik who not surprisingly has a substantial cheering section here to watch him tonight. He is from Bourbonnais, Illinois. That is the far southwest side of Chicago, home of Olivet Nazarene University and longtime training camp home of the Chicago Bears. He played at Northern Illinois, did Mark Canning. So if he scores one tonight, you will hear a roar from a certain section of the viewing audience here at Carroll Stadium. Fans continue to file in on this absolutely gorgeous weather night. Temperatures in the upper 60s. Lovely breeze tonight. Throw in coming here for the Indy 11, and it will be whistled as a foul. So forget the throw in. It'll be a restart just shy of the midfield stripe for the visitors. This portion of the match brought to us by the Keystone Group, specializing in transformational developments, construction, management, and investments. There's Markanik on your screen. Still very young in his professional career, drafted by FC Cincinnati a couple of seasons ago. He has certainly found a home in South Carolina. Wicked, wicked left foot. Scored a couple of great goals already this season. Good pressure applied by Blake and Stanley, who touched it last, Charleston did. Not the like so far from the Indy 11. Again, just not really a goal scoring chance generated from it just yet. Good switch of the attack. Got Guenzotti sneak into the back post. Budati trying to find a window of space and does. And ah. That was Schneider, who not only goes up and over the bar, but nearly up and over the Brickyard Battalion. But again, you like the creativity for the Indy 11. Right, and then they're not just blind balls that are being played across the middle. You know, you got a late run coming from Schneider, and the ball is, is laid out to the 18 form. Fans, you can show your Indy 11 pride and get your exclusive IMCU Indy 11 debit card at any IMCU branch or online at IMCU.com today. Well, clearly the Indy 11 trying to dictate tempo here. They have been aggressive on the press in the early stages of this match. And it leads to a foul drawn by Schneider. We did not see Schneider the first couple of matches of the season. He had an assist in his home debut in the 1-1 draw against Sacramento. If there's one thing that, you know, that we see in terms of changes from last year to this, and obviously there is the obvious change in terms of the head coach from Mark Lowry to Sean McCauley, but this is a far deeper squad than Indy had a year ago. Akoba. Great ball. Stanley. Blake kept on side by Archer, amongst others.
Gibson finds Gwenzotti. Gwenzotti works his way around Archer, but Archer wins it back. Hit from distance, does not get through. Dees Pay has had to do, well, frankly, not much so far in this game. One of Indy's better players from a season ago. And that'll be a foul against Dees Pay. Dees Pay immediately over to check on Emilio Icaza. And apologize for the late contact. And a, a good job by Dees Pay early on, right after that turnover. He went and he pressed the ball and didn't allow Charleston an easy access to the space that he vacated. They knocked it around for a little bit, was still able to find it. Just and that's when they drew the foul. Just a talking to for Dees Pay, no card issue. This reminder, hopefully you use soccer Saturday every Saturday morning on 93.5 and 107.5. The fan is a pregame primer for your boys in blue. Today on the program, we talked to head coach Sean McCulley, Jack Blake. He of the four goals through five matches so far. Newest member of the boys in blue, Lawrence Wooten from England by way of Ohio State University. And today is April the 13th. 10 years ago yesterday, on April the 12th of 2014, Indy 11 played their first match in club history, and the opening goal scorer, Mike Ambersley, joined the show as well. Log on to 1075thefan.com to listen to the show in podcast form after the live airing every Saturday at 9 a.m. Here's Myers. Poked away by Dees Pay. Will be a throw in for the Charleston Battery. And we've referenced this with Max Schneider. We said it with Myers as well. You are now starting to see more players that get a year or two in MLS Next Pro and then feel maybe their best chance to showcase their skills for teams in, in this league, MLS, internationally, is here in the USL Championship. You take a look at the, the stuff that the USL Championship has, has done. You look at the transfer fees coming out of, you know, Loose City last year, Orange County over the last couple of years, the CBS nationally televised broadcast. And this is this is a viable uh, option for players. Meyer so far with five matches played and four starts, two goals and an assist. For the young man who turned 23 years of age last Friday. So, Here's one of those areas you got to stay away from these fouls right on the edge of the attacking third. Malloy is so dangerous. Yeah, first real set piece opportunity here for Charleston. Nothing comes of it just yet. To Santos. Gutierrez. Now Chris Allen. Kind of push that ball away from the 18. Dees Pay lifts it closer to the touch line. Chapman Page didn't get the clearance he wanted to. So he could be set for Stanley. He is dogging in his pursuit of Allen. Tremendous ball from Allen. Dos Santos makes a cutting run in behind. And Otel has to make a diving save. That ball was... Kind of pinged a couple of different directions. Never had much behind it. But, again, first true goal-scoring chance for either side here 18 minutes in. Yeah, you talk about it being pinged around. It winds up just out of the reach of Ikaza to have a great opportunity on it. It's just a little poke, and it winds up right to Ertl. Chapman Page plays the long ball. Graham Smith got there first. Malloy, a bit of a nudge. Play on. Jack Blake with a left foot. Diving save by Adam Grinwis. Great little combination play from India 11 at the top of the box. Tough, tough save. That's one of those ones. Bounces with pace in front of the keeper. You're thinking, hey, this is going to be a ball that's parried away. Maybe it's going to be left in the box. He holds it. Grinwis there on your screen. He is a veteran. He turns 32 next weekend. However, he's largely been a, a, a reserve keeper in Major League Soccer. He's not had that much playing experience. He's getting plenty of it this year with the battery at the other end. He causes slides. Throw. 
and Charleston is on the board. The battery get the first goal of the match in minute number 20. Emilio Icaza finds the back of the net. Little ball one at the top of their attacking third. Icaza pushes it out to Markanik. Finishes his run. Markanik finds him in the box. One touch. Four goals, three assists in 24 matches a season ago for Emilio Icaza. Splits two defenders and Odal couldn't keep it out. And he finds themselves in a similar position as frankly they have been in numerous times this year. Having to chase the game down a goal in the opening half. Pierman's side trying to complete a heck of a week. Having to beat Lou City on Tuesday at home and accomplishing that. For Ikaza, that is his first goal of this season. He's appeared in all seven matches. This is his fifth start of the year. Arcanic does get the assist on that one and give away at the back by the Indy 11. Allen, Chapman Page steers it clear for a moment. Lloyd just dust enough to keep possession. Hey, right on that turnover, the ball right to Mark Koenig. And if he saw it, he had M.D. Myers right down the middle to split the center backs. Just wasn't able to, to see it and deliver the ball. It will be a corner coming up. Our corner is brought to us by Wilson Kehoe Winningham. It is Malloy that heads the corner flag to direct traffic for the battery. Here's one important thing he needs, a ball. Malloy, the native of Ireland, played collegially here in the States. A little conversation before this ball is sent in by Malloy. Malloy spent one year playing NAIA soccer at Kaiser in Florida before transferring to Penn State. He is the league leader in passes completed with over 440 in six matches. I think he was at the top last year as well. Malloy sends it in. Odell got hands on it, but once again be a corner kick brought to us by Wilson Kehoe Winningham. Yeah, that's a great serve. A lot of congestion in the box and you put one just over Budati's head just to see if somebody can get a little touch on it. Ending ball goes all the way through. No damage done there. Restart coming for the Indy 11. Tonight's game presented in part by our friends at Mob Water. Refreshing fruit-infused vodka water with zero carbonation, zero sugar, zero carbs, only 90 calories. Mob Water is the perfect game day drink. Found in Indiana and now a proud sponsor of the Indy 11. Please drink and enjoy responsibly. Myers the target. Dees pay. Missed the clearance, but at the end of the day, it's not the worst thing in the world. It worked out just the same for him. Yannick Odell, his second year with the Indy 11. Had played in every match but one entering August last year. And suffered work turned out to be a season-ending injury in training. Tim Trill came in and played well for the next three months, but Tim now playing in League One. Odell once again the starting netminder for the Indy 11. That's some nifty, nifty footwork from Akaza in the middle of the field. Well, bounces around a couple different directions. Myers trying to find some space. Look at that last last second decision making from Malloy. He's looking, looking. Can he feed it? Can he feed it? Can he feed it? All the lanes are blocked. Touches it out wide. 
Odo play that off the head of Adrian Deesh Pay, who got there for the Indy 11. The USL on CBS Networks continues in April. Two Saturdays from now, April 27th. Great cross-conference battle. The Tampa Bay Rowdies clash with New Mexico United. You can catch that at 7.30 on CBS Sports Network. If you're a Spectrum subscriber like me, that would be channel 1425 as part of your cable package. See, you retain everything in that head of yours. What disposable knowledge? What, what are the things that you just don't? Fitness plans. <laughs> Okay. All right. Good switch of the attack here by the Charleston Battery. This is Dos Santos. First 15 belong to the Indy 11. Last 10 belong to the Battery. A rare errant touch for the Battery there. That ball intended for Meyer. Sprung a little bit too far. Made it an easy play for Odell. Yeah, but you, you have to like the thought from Dos Santos. Gutierrez has Budati engaged out wide. That opens up a little bit of space. You've got center back Callum Chapman Page with the mark. They just try and make a slashing run behind, and just it's just a little bit miss hit. But I love the idea of trying to play that ball into space and lead your attacker into that window. Good recovery by Budati. When Zadi times the run perfectly, Schneider, Budati. Trying to find Williams. Williams has a hit. Does not get through. Same can be said in the follow-up for Jack Blake. Brilliant jog by Segbers. You got one of the, the best scorers in the USL Championship. On the edge of the six with the ball at his feet. And Segbers throws himself in front to make sure that all the windows are closed. Here's Ekoba. Ekoba has a hit. Ekoba! <laughs> Welcome to Indy. Tega Ekoba. The Indy 11 of time in minute number 27. It is time to cue the smoke in Indianapolis. Well, we have referenced the fact that Indy has gotten down a goal to nil in four of their six matches so far this year. In all four of them, they have scored the next goal to level the match at a goal apiece. And, and, and it's been quick. And you look at this here. Uh, center back jumps a little bit outside. It's Smith just slides a little bit out in front of Grinwis's field of vision. Gives him a little bit of a screen. But Tega just buries a great ball inside the far post. So again, he is one of the newer members of the Indy 11. And on loan from Portland Timbers. Or Ecoba. He becomes the fifth different score for the Indy 11 this season. This is his fourth match, his second start. Played in 170 minutes coming in. And he keeps the accelerator pressed down. Stanley, back post, Guenzani! Oh, Sebastian Guenzani gets his second goal of the season, both in front of the home fans in Indianapolis. From a goal down to a goal up in a matter of two minutes, stock up some more smoke in the Brick Yard <laughs> Battalion. This is Aiden Stanley. Aiden Stanley on the outside, delivers a ball in the middle, recognizes that he is open and he is calling for the ball. He's waving his hands. He's screaming for it. They deliver it to him. He gets the ball past Segbers. Guenzotti does what Guenzotti does and finishes it back post. There are two players playing in this match for the Indy 11. They're in the top 10 of goals scored in the history of the league. Sebastian Guenzotti and Augie Williams. Sebastian now north of 70 in his career. He had double digits a season ago. A wonderful haze envelops Carroll Stadium. Every home game smells like a 4th of July barbecue when you come to an Indy 11 match. <laughs> well, Indy 11 involved in an eight-goal match on Saturday. 
Charleston involved in a five goal match on Tuesday. Perhaps we should have seen three in the first 30 minutes coming. Indy has played a very rugged schedule to start this season. Losses to Detroit, who have gotten a maximum 12 points from their first four matches. I don't think I have to explain to anybody watching this broadcast how good Lou City is each and every year. Again, Charleston was a penalty kick or two away from winning a league championship last year. Oakland's pretty good side, and Indy lost to them at the beginning of the season. But still, there is a good amount of pressure on Indy to, to try to start to make up some distance. They entered this match eight points back of Charleston and Lou City and Detroit in the Eastern Conference standings. Right now, they're in line to potentially get all three points with a lot of soccer left to play 60-plus minutes here in Indianapolis. Budati, oh. just he and Gwenzati. Just not on the same page. Of course, this match is brought to us by Community Health Network. Exceptional care, simply delivered. I, I like that. I like that thought of you know attacking and trying to put them under right away with that turnover. But maybe another touch would have drawn a little bit more space on the backside. But then a really bad pass by Charleston, but Ekoba not really in a position to do anything with it just yet. He will draw a foul, and it will be the first card of the match. So a card will be shown. So first yellow will go the way of Chris Allen. Well, credit the resiliency of the Indy 11. Kind of fair that felt the air go out of the building for a few minutes after Charleston scored. That first tally night for Emilio Icaza. That response is so important. Not just the equalizer. You know, you're, you're playing great. You're on the front foot. You're creating, creating, creating. You just haven't been rewarded. Then you give one up. It's so deflating. But then to respond within just a couple minutes, fantastic. Koba showing some nifty skills on the ball. Finally dispossessed by well, the three battery players that have been surrounding him. And Chapman Page. Just clipped I, I Gutierrez you, there at the end of the play. I love the way Chapman Page plays. You know if you're going against him, if you watch film, if you've got your back to the field to play and that ball is coming to you, you're going to get hit. Callum believes he can defy physics and go through you to get that ball. Dos Santos plays it back across. Chapman Page gets a flick. Blake gets a little bit more of that one. And all the way back to Grinwis for the battery. E-Football 2024 is here. Live your dream. Rep your team and play as your favorite USL championship club. E-Football is free to play. Download now. Markanik. Here's Malloy. Chapman Page digs in. Not enough in it, says Greg Dopka. Good combination here by the Indy 11. Looking back post, Budati. Plays it back across. Allen sweeps it away. Uh, Jack Blake was in the right spot. Budati just couldn't pull it back quite far enough. And unfortunately, Budati is down behind the play. All started with a, a ball into Augie Williams. One touch to turn and then to play Aiden Stanley into space. Budati dealt with a couple of different injuries last year, yet still played a vast majority of the games. He has missed one game this season, did Eunice. But he is such a focal point for what the Indy 11 do. Came in with two of the five assists on the season for the Indy 11. 
We've talked about the depth that the Indy 11 have available. However, a couple of the faces that would be available tonight are of the newer variety for the Indy 11. They had a couple of player transfer at the end of the week as they sent Roberto Molina and Danny Barbier to Miami FC in exchange for Ben Mines and Ben Ofemu. Other players available off the bench tonight for Coach Sean McCauley, Elliot Collier, McCauley King, Dougie Martinez, Lawrence Wooten. In terms of a field position players available. Take a closer look. Great job by our Tupelo Honey crew to give you kind of a zoom look here. And again, just took an awkward step as he was trying to Ben, not just the ball, but himself to stay in the field to play. And knowing Budati, he'll tough it out and be back in there momentarily. Yeah, there's there's not been a question of, of this kid's toughness. I mean, we saw it, you know, just in front of the booth last year with the shoulder injury and then, you know, trying to fight through it and, and getting back on the field in record time with that kind of an injury. And he dislocated his shoulder and missed two weeks. It's incredible. And he really didn't play at 100% because of that the rest of the year, but still he at 80 or 90%, still better than most. Ikoba just a tank on the ball. He's a tough player to push off. The flip for Gwenzotti. Gwenzotti just got a, a little bit too much of that one immediately. However, he got the benefit of the doubt. The ball apparently took a turn off of Graham Smith. It'll be a corner for the Indy 11. Our corner kicks brought to us by Wilson Kehoe Winningham. Yeah, that ball laid up well for Gwenzotti. You know, I, I don't know that he was going for goal versus trying to drive a strong ball across or through the six. But we've seen him score from angles like that. Already his 72nd USL championship goal tonight. That ties him with the legend Jorge Herrera for sixth in league history. Bending ball in, and these pay did take a touch off of a Charleston defender. Another corner coming to the opposite side we go. But regardless of what corner flag it goes to, it's brought to us by our friends at Wilson Kehoe Winningham. Tonight's match brought to us by our friends at Dorma Cava for every place that matters. You're looking to make it three in a row again. Beautiful back post ball. Myers clears it. Udati will settle. Or some pieces inverted right now for the Indy 11. Is now Chapman Page as well as these pay will work their way back to a more defensive position. Nothing comes of that for the Indy 11. Now in transition, space opens up for Charleston. It's Gutierrez. A great transitional moment from Charleston. You got both Budani and Guenzotti that committed to Ikaza, and Gutierrez takes off into space. They find him in a great recovery by Indy 11 to get numbers back. Tremendous work by Budani to keep that ball in play. And the attack point retreats a bit now for the battery. And three wins and three draws so far for Charleston. Picked up 12 points of a possible 18 for last year's third place regular season finisher. But they improved their point total by 34 from the previous season in 2022. Segbers, Hudati. Williams will hold up play for the Indian for a moment. Yeah, Malloy just read that perfectly. He does a lot of that. Augie Williams trying to set him up with a little misdirection with his hips. Malloy doesn't bite. And a foul against Indy. And again, a dangerous restart opportunity coming here for the visitors from Charleston. Yeah, and Malloy wanted to punch that ball out to Dos Santos and go quickly. Augie Williams steps in front. Malloy says, I didn't ask for 10. I didn't ask for 10. I wanted to play it quick. This portion of the match brought to us by the Keystone Group, specializing in transformational developments, construction, management, and investments.
Malloy sends it in. Odell knocks it about 30 yards the other direction. But caught up in the mix. Indy's got a player down and trying to try to do math as to see who that might be. And now at a, at a closer look, it's Aiden Stanley that is the player down. So both of the outside backs have taken a bit of a knock here in the early going for the Indy 11. I'm not sure if Yannick may have inadvertently clipped him trying to steer that ball outside of the 18. Yep. Got pummeled by his own teammate. No one's springing to action just yet for the Indy 11 trying to warm up. Both teams have a chance to kind of take a bit of a hydration break here. And with three goals and a card issued so far in this match and now this injury time I would imagine we are looking at a couple of added minutes if not more before we get to our halftime break by the way a special halftime guest will be joining us guy who was the star of Indy 500 qualifying a year ago in Jack Harvey he's a big time football fan where he is from in Great Britain he's been a guest on Soccer Saturday a, a few years ago is also a Star Wars fan. He's got the nickname Jedi Jack down around the track. Good to see Stanley at least in a seated position. And hopefully he'll be allowed to continue on. Obviously going to have to come to the side for a little bit. By the way, our final minutes of half number one brought to us by Sherwin-Williams. Bring cover to life with Sherwin-Williams. Stanley has collected himself enough to potentially re-enter. Restart coming here for the battery. We'll also hear from Indy 11 head coach Sean McCauley. Coming up during the halftime show as well. Of course, we'll have a look around the league. Scores from earlier this week. One match earlier today saw Loudon beat Memphis United. Full slate following this win too. That and more come your way during our halftime show. Koba and the first goal for the Indy 11. Gwenzotti, the go-ahead goal for the Indy 11. After Ikaza started the scoring frenzy for the visitors. And around the 20-minute mark. Again, Dos Santos told, hey. Back at the other side of the midfield stripe. Smith will play the flat ball to Archer. A couple of veterans of this league right there. First saw Smith in his days with Sporting Kansas City, too. Gutierrez plays it across, doesn't get through, but it will be a corner. And again, Budati comes up hobbling yet again, and he may be able to get to halftime. That might be about it for Eunice at this point. Our corner is brought to us by Wilson Kehoe Winningham. Great ball driven into that pocket of space by Allen. And holy smokes, Gutierrez just kills it, brings it right down to his feet in one touch. Again, coming up for the Indy 11 this week will be their debut in the U.S. Open Cup as they will go play at Chicago Fire 2 on Wednesday. So there is midweek action for the Indy 11. That is not the case for the visitors in the battery because they are amongst the eight teams that get to enter in the next round of the U.S. Open Cup from the USL Championship. They'll play on May 7th or 8th. Maka King is ready if Budati cannot continue on. Fans are a minor. Watch Wish TV, your local news source. Find them online, wishtv.com. Quick restart here with Indy playing a man down. Chapman Page got ahead there first. Gibson tries to dig out space against Malloy. And we will have added time before we get to the halftime break. Beautiful bending ball that Chapman Page couldn't clear, but no damage done. 
Down numbers if they can spring the attack now for the Indy 11. Budati is at least going to finish the half. He just got waved back on. 11 v 11 here. Williams, right idea by Gibson. He, he timed the run, just couldn't get there for and, that pass in time. Yeah, and you saw it. it. It held up just a little bit. He put a little spin on it. It held up a little bit, just not enough. And they had a lead in their last match in this building against unbeaten Detroit City. The DCFC scored the last two to take the three points on the road in that one. That's played off of Ikaza. Great job by Blake to dig in and get what he can out of that. And we'll start to glance toward the fourth official, Kevin Fiker, this evening. He will tell us exactly how much time is left before we get to the halftime break. And the answer is five minutes of additional time necessary. Seth Barton. Matish Dolsky, the assistant referees tonight. Markanik fouled by Stanley. Markanik does have the assist on the Ikaza goal from earlier in the half. And obviously, this is a very potent battery attack. Certainly a one-goal lead, not safe at any point. Against a team that, again, is at the top of the Eastern Conference and Frankly, I don't think it's going to be straying from that at any point in time this year. Great ball. This is Sekbers. Blake slows him down. Here's Smith. Smith played in this field as a collegian back in his days at the University of Denver. And IUPUI is a member of the Summit League Denver, a great college soccer program. Opportunity here. The hit and oh a goal. Goodness. Two goals apiece. And that's, you said, the lethal left foot of Mark Koenig. There it is. Yeah. His six of the season. And we're all tied up going to halftime. And that's one of those you, you, you can't give him that much space, especially if you're on, on his left foot. You got to make sure you're, you're jumping that a little bit just to put a little bit of pressure on that ball. There's been a couple of moments where the Indy 11 have switched off, and Charleston has made them pay on both occasions. What a hit. What a hit. And a brace against Lou City on Tuesday night. Again, he's got a good chunk of fans and family and friends to watch him here from the Chicago suburbs tonight. Nick had 11 goals a season ago. His twin brother Anthony plays with St. Louis City 2 in MLS Next Pro. Nick has a chance to try to catch Wilson Harris because Harris doesn't play this weekend. Lou City is off until next weekend. Going to be a foul against Augie Williams. What a strike. You know, similar to the, the ball he scored on the opposite side of the field, but still with his left foot against Lou City on Tuesday night. By the way, away from the action as we were showing the goal celebration for the battery, Callum Chapman Page did pick up a yellow. So a yellow now has been shown in each direction in tonight's matchup. Is there another response in Indy in this half? Lakoba. Not enough in it. Budati to go off of him, and again, he is still hobbling. It will be a corner coming. The corner is brought to us by our friends at Wilson Kehoe Winningham. It's also thank the good folks of McGowan Insurance Group and Auto Owners Insurance. They have teamed up to make tailored insurance policies for your family. 
Dottie gutting it out on a bum wheel right now for the Indy 11 trying to keep them on level terms. Stanley back post. Grinwis carries it away. Smart, smart play. A lot of blue jerseys on the back post. Eventually, foul whistle against the Indy 11. Greenwich content to kind of take the air out of the ball here for a second. has been a very busy first half in both directions that officially comes to an end here. Two goals apiece between the Indy 11 and the Charleston Battery. When Zadik, his 72nd goal in USL championship play, his second of the season. Mark Koenig, his sixth of the season. And before we get to... Our halftime show, the head coach of the Indy 11 in Sean McCauley, joining us now pitch side. Let's get to him coming up here in a matter of moments. Again, as the two teams are heading into the locker room, Sean joins us now. Coach, obviously your perspective might have changed a great deal there with a couple minutes left to go in it. Just your thoughts as to what you saw from your team in half number one. I thought we played, played well. You know, we've had ch chances and opportunities. We've uh, kept the ball better than what we did last week, so that was a, a, a plus. A bit disappointed in defending, but then again, I think that's possibly a foul on, on Diz uh, for their goal. I mean, it's a great strike and a great finish from the kid, but prior to that, I think it's a foul, and we've got to, you know, get over these small decisions that are going against us and, and, and look after ourselves and, and get back into the second half and, and try and get another goal. Anything tactically you look at changing in half number two, coach? Not for now, no. I think we're doing all right tactically, you know, stopping them from playing. Uh, you know, their normal game. So I think they might change. Sean, thank you very much. We'll talk to you post-match. Thank you. Sean McCauley, head coach of the Indy 11, kind enough to join us here as he gets ready to join the guys in the locker room. So, again, two goals apiece. Ikaza, the first of the match. Then two quick answers by the Indy 11 after that. But it's Mark Kanich's sixth of the season that ties us at two at halftime. That first half was busy. Halftime will be as well. A special guest joins us next as you're watching Indy 11 Soccer on My Indy TV and ESPN+. Plus. It's very true that it takes a village to raise a child. And when it comes to my healthcare village at Community Health Network, it's all nestled right in my phone. Accessing healthcare is the ability to be connected with your provider and ask a question when you need it. I feel like when I'm meeting with a community nurse practitioner or doctor, they're tuned in to what is going on with me and the way that they can serve me best. Stand by me. Indiana, winning is in our DNA. And we're winning the future with 22 billion in new business investment, building an economy of the future with unprecedented momentum. Indiana, for the winners. 
but plenty of highlights for us to get to from half number one, and trust me, we will get there. Tonight is Star Wars night, but on May 25th, it will be racing night for the Indy 11, because that is the night before the Indianapolis 500, and that is always a special weekend for Jack Harvey, who joins us now, and we're about 11 months removed from what was a remarkable <laughs> whole day qualification oh for you. It's good to see you as always. And Thank as you. you well know, in Indianapolis, that's what you're going to be known for. Somehow finding speed <laughs> at the 59th minute and 59th second of God. that qualification run last year. Wasn't that some drama? Mike, what was it like living it? Um, do you know, actually, I was so present in just like the moment and what was happening in that very second that it, when I watched it back, that's when I was like, oh my God, like, the buzzer's gone. I didn't know that when I was in the car. So after we did the run and they said you made the race, I was like, well, is anyone going to go again? And they're like, no, like the buzzer's already gone. So <laughs> that was a dramatic day that I never, ever, ever want to be a part of again. But yeah, for crazy. Those, for those who don't follow IndyCar kind of the way that I do, uh, that was in the 30 car where he bumped his teammate at the time in Graham Ray Hall in the 15. Graham, of course, Ooh. would have running the race. Unfortunately for the injured Stefan Wilson, that would develop over the course of the next 48 hours after that. This year, you're running a partial schedule for Dale Coyne. I'm not sure if there's going to be a seat for you in the 500, but just what is, is kind of the season outlook for you this year with, uh, with Dale Coyne Racing? I mean, it's actually like nearly all of the season, so I'm going to be doing uh, 15 right now out of the 18 races. It's just the, one of the ones I'm not doing just happens to be the Indy 500. It's a shame. Uh, you know, it's the biggest race of the year, especially I live in Indy. I've been here for 10 years, so I understand what the Indy 500 means in the motorsport world, but also in this local community. So that's a little bit of a bummer, no doubt, but... I mean, at the end of the day, I'm still grateful to be driving something, uh, and that's the biggest thing. So let's bring this now forward to our conversation tonight. Uh, you're a legit football fan. You've oh, been yeah. to matches here a, I have. a lot. Yes. So, so kind of your ties here with the Indy 11, Jack. Um, well, like you said, first and foremost, I am just a football fan, and I'm going to say football, not soccer. I Sorry, know what you mean. It's okay. It. It's okay. I like <laughs> it. Um, and yeah, honestly, I used to live in the same building as quite a lot of the players. So I've been able to build a you know pretty good relationship with some of the guys and some of them aren't here anymore. But just, you know, I've had such a, a fun time cheering for Indy 11 and coming out uh, downtown to be able to, you know, really embrace, um, you know, the city, but also a passion of mine and a hobby that's been uh, actually I, before I even went racing, I played football. So, you know, I'm, I'm definitely not going to go on the field and embarrass myself or anything <laughs> goofy. Uh, but I was in the uh, BYB for a little bit, and they scored, then we scored too, then they scored again. And, oh, I mean, it's just... It's actually been a really fantastic, like, first half of football, I think. So as, as we start looking at racing Indy night in May, we were talking to IMS, and we talked to them about Star Wars night. They said, oh, you got to get Jedi, yes. Jedi Jack yeah. out. How did the nickname <laughs> Jedi Jack come about? Oh, um, well, actually, that's what's hilarious about tonight. There's, you know, there's a, there's a really nice, it's probably the only good triangle that I've ever really been a part of. Uh, you got Star Wars night, but I'm here on behalf of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway and, you know, representing the whole in some month of May. And I'm here in the 11 playing, uh, watching football happen. So, I mean, this is a, a beautiful triangle that's happening right now. And, I mean, really, one of the things that I've always appreciated about sports in Indiana, um, I haven't lived anywhere else, but I feel it strongly here, is, you know, the, the natural way that teams, whether it's the Colts, the Pacers, Indy 11, IMS, they, they support each other to just basically enhance and promote this state this city and i think it's brilliant so when they said hey it's star wars night do you want to go i'm like well actually i was going to come anyway so then in the end coming and representing ims was also pretty cool and i'm just a huge star wars fan i'm a i'm a, I'm a peak nerd uh, people don't always know that about me but like <laughs> star wars is my number one kind of harry potter after that marvel Love after it. that Love so it. yeah just uh yeah I like Jedi Jack, though. I mean, that kind of feels like a good nickname. That's I'm, awesome. I'm not sure you could be a nerd when you've gone 230 miles an hour. I'm a cool Just nerd, man. I'm a cool nerd. <laughs> Very I'm fast nerd. And by the way, folks, there's going to be some good news for Jack coming up on Monday. So stay tuned on kind of IndyCar social media channels. That's all we can say about that at this time. Thank you. Good to see you, my Thank friend. Thank you, guys. Pleasure. Good luck the rest of the Thank season. You. Again, uh, Jack Carvey kind enough to join us here at halftime of the match. It has been a high-speed race in the first 45 minutes in the 11 to Charleston Battery 2. Rest of our halftime show comes away next on My Indy TV and ESPN Plus.
Two most important days in your life are the day you are born and the day you find out why. Yeah, trick. I said what I said. I don't care. I paint the town red. The bright horses are broken free from the fields. They're hungry for the women's game. They want to see women's soccer. They want to play women's soccer. And that's what we're building at the USL. doesn't care who you are or why you hurt, but pain can be mastered if you know the way. Fight back with Tiger Balm's legendary herbal power. Trusted for over a hundred years, our proven blend of camphor, menthol, and essential oils tames pain with the strength and speed of the tiger so that you can rise above pain and get back to living. This is the way of the tiger. We all have goals. But let's be honest. Most of us aren't going to be professional athletes. But if your goal is to finish your degree, we can help. Come to a university that puts your goals first. Bellevue University, your partner in finishing goals. I'm a happy-go-lucky guy, but sometimes I get uh, a little stressed because I'm not for sure what's going to happen down the road. I was at the cancer unit, and when I come out from seeing the doctor, I said something about needing some help with all the paperwork. They gave me a name and a phone number. Her name is Molly. She works over at Community. She tells me, stop worrying. Let me take care of it. She is my angel. Stand by me. Now, not normally in a USL championship halftime, we do you know, half the show about IndyCar, but we are in Indianapolis. And by the way, the Tampa Bay Rowdies do play inside of the St. Petersburg Grand Prix track. Maybe there's more synergy there than you would think. Time for our news and notes segment, and we reference the fact that Wilson Harris, he's been good ever since he's been in this league. Right. But seven goals in the first four matches, he's become the youngest player to 50 in his USL championship career, and yes, a hat trick to beat the Indy 11 on CBS last Saturday. A hat trick and an assist. I mean, it's like Mark Hanick out here. You know, the, the, the kids can score as well as play make. We touched on this briefly in terms of Indy 11. They will go to SeatGeek Stadium in Bridgeview, southwest side of Chicago, to play Chicago Fire 2, 8 o'clock on Wednesday night. Indy 11, one of 16 championship teams that enter the Open Cup this week. Charleston, one of those top eight teams from last year, that gets to enter kind of in the final round of, of entries. Eight MLS teams will enter with them. They won't play until May 7th or the 8th. Here is the standings in the Eastern Conference, and you notice a trend. And he's already played the top three teams of this group. Again, it'll all balance out. You play everybody on your side twice, everybody on the other side once, but it has been a treacherous slate so far for the Indy 11 through six matches. Right, and you take a look. They've played the top here in the East, but then you, you've also played the class of the league in Sacramento and had to fly out to Oakland. So it has been a tough start schedule-wise for the 11. A couple of midweek matches already leading into a full slate of action tonight. So scores from around the league. The Thursday night game saw Tampa put up five against Miami FC. Loudon a 2-1 winner earlier today. Rhode Island and Pittsburgh scoreless through the first 30 minutes. We got to get to break because we've got a second half of soccer to bring your way. If it's as fun as the last one, it's worth your time to stick around. Back in a moment on My Indy TV. The main part of my job is definitely listening. People deserve transparency. I don't want the financial part to be something that stops or hinders a patient from having the health care that they need. I try to treat each person like they're my mom or my grandmother, my daughter, my husband. I want them to know that they're not just another phone call for us. 
and it's very rewarding to know that I can provide peace of mind. Stand by me. Meet Chip. 30 years ago, he started a small business with a big idea. Today, there's a new building, a new fleet of equipment, and a new era of leadership. But we know Chip, and at Indiana Members Credit Union, we know he plans to keep growing, building business with the next generation. IMCU is here to help with secure and simple account management tools and commercial financing to grow business. Today, it's all about Chip. Tomorrow, it's all about you. Because at IMCU, it's you that matters. When your cat's a meme and your dog is too. And it's hard to know what's fake or true. Just raise a glass with a friend or two. And you tell them more, more, tell them more, more, tell them more, 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 do. When the online chants keep getting worse. And you lost your keys in the metaverse. Now your right swipe just went left on you. You tell them more, tell them more, tell them more, do. It's a crazy world, so what do you do? You tell them more, tell them more. Registration is open for Indy 11 camps. It's a brand new day. Our camps provide fun times, tickets, and gear to take home. Indy 11 camps feature top-end coaching from professionals as well as chances to meet the pro players. Scholarships are also offered for camps. Register now at Indy11.com slash camps. Players are waiting. Let's not make them wait any longer, shall we? Charles will have the ball to start. Half number two, Greg Rakestraw, Brad Hodder with you. By the way, as expected, a substitution had to be made for the Indy 11. Yunus Budati is done for the night. He soldiered through 45 minutes. Maka King will spell him in his stead. For Maka, this will just be the second appearance he has made this season. He has played all of 18 minutes in one match so far. Of course, Mackham, much like Tyler Gibson and, frankly, even Cam Lindley, in his second stint with the Indy 11, he was brought back early in the season a year ago. Mackham, kind of a Swiss Army Knife type of player, can play several different positions for the boys in blue. We've obviously had a chance to talk to head coach Sean McCauley of the Indy 11. If you're Ben Pierman, what was your message to your guys at halftime, Brad? It's a level of confidence. You know, you're either returning Eastern Conference champion, you know, penalty kick away from winning the whole thing last year. You expect your team to be able to weather uh, a, a situation like those two goals in three to four minutes and not be phased by that and then respond. And so it, it's just one of, hey, it's a championship culture. This is what we do. We got the game back to even. Now we go out and win it. Of course, the match is brought to us by Dorma Kaba. For every place that matters. Norman Cabo, one of the great new partner sponsors of the Indy 11 this season. King getting tested immediately by Gutierrez. It will be a corner kick brought to us by Wilson Kehoe Winningham. King had spent time at both El Paso and with Colorado Springs before making his return to Indianapolis. It's Malloy that will send it in. Ball flicks off of Schneider, Graham Smith, and saved by Deespay. Took no chances. Again, a corner coming. Brought to us by Wilson Kehoe Winningham from the opposite side. Yeah, brilliant serve to the front post. Flicked on. You got Smith coming backside. Cleans it up, and Despay comes in. And just makes sure it doesn't wind up back inside the six. And I think Odell had it covered, but Adrian takes no chances in his second year with the Indy 11. The first Cuban-born member of the Indy 11. And an all-league level performer a season ago. Malloy, Odell, back post, punches away with his right hand. Back to Mark Sekbers in midfield. Over Wisconsin Badger is Sekbers. Ah, 
Peraza, the first goal scorer of this match, his first of the season. No changes yet, by the way, for the battery. They have not gone as deep into their bench throughout the course of this season just yet again because this is their third match in eight days. They very well could, could go a, a little bit deeper than usual tonight. Rowan coming here for the Indy 11. Williams. Clever touch. Good little combination to get out of a jam. Maka King. Graham Smith steers that away from Augie Williams. How does the Indy 11 attack change with King in for Budati, Brad? Well, I, I don't think he's going to get forward quite as much, but he, you know, he's, he's such a tough defender, too. You take a look at him next to Callum Chapman Page, and you wonder what's going to happen there on the left side for the battery now. I, I mean this in the nicest way possible. That's a whole lot of means sitting <laughs> there next to each other for the Indy 11. Uh, you, you have to love it. You have to. It's just an edge that both of those guys play with. Mark Koenig, he's been hitting everything else. Has a hit. That one didn't get through. Allen, Malloy. Just weaving okay, through traffic, does Malloy. Unreal. Unreal. And a relatively easy play for Yannick Odell, who will restart quickly and find Jack Blake. And these are those moments we talked about in the keys of the game. Now you got Malloy out on the edge. You got him away from being that front screen. Now can you attack that back line before you get their best player back? ikoba has got one. Didn't miss having a second by much. It'll be a goal kick for Grinwis and Charleston. And, and I love this about Malloy. He wants to solve all the problems. But you can bait him out of the middle, which makes them less effective as a back line if you can attack it quickly like that. Fans, you can show your Indy 11 pride at your exclusive IMCU Indy 11 debit card at any IMCU branch or online at IMCU.com today. There is a point in this match where a point becomes a good result for Charleston. We are far from that point of the match right now. Well, you look, we, you spoke about it. They're undefeated in 2024. I think the stretch goes back, what, maybe 18 game stretches into last year that they have not dropped a match. Archer under pressure from Williams. Archer with a it's well read a straying run forward and then draws contact from Schneider and a card is going to be shown not to Schneider for the foul but for Blake for the time waste second yellow of the season against Jack Blake it's well read by Archer he's he's standing the ball as a center back they take away all his passing lanes he says okay give me that space I'll take it Archer, the native of Trinidad and Tobago. He has played so long for the battery that Neville Hackshaw was his teammate in Charleston. Neville spent four years playing for the Indy 11. Now is in his second year playing for the Oakland Roots. Archer was second team all league back in the COVID shortened season of 2020. He's getting his third start of this year. King puts Dos Santos under pressure, and Dos Santos makes the miscue. The first of two times that these two teams will see each other this year. Indy heads to Charleston. August 2nd for the rematch. I can guarantee you it's going to be just a little bit warmer that night in Charleston than it is here tonight. Blake commits the foul and sitting on a yellow. There's not much he can say about it. Right, right. And he kind of recognized that immediately and retreated back to a safe distance. Yeah, the natural competitor in him wanted to argue that call. And then the mature, experienced player that he was said, uh, I know where I'm at. His ninth year of playing professionally here in the States, the native of England. Of course, this match brought to us by Community Health Sports Medicine, the official sports medicine provider of the Indy 11. Exceptional care simply delivered. This ball delivered into a dangerous spot. Indy cleared it for a moment. Gutierrez didn't have the hit that he wanted to. Smith sends it back in. King will advance the ball forward and heads up in the front row of the BYB. 
Yeah, yep. Malloy brought that down a little too heavy out in front of him. Good to you. Uh, Guenzotti was able to close that space, so Malloy had to take a hit a little sooner than he wanted. When you do that, you're leaning back a little bit, and the ball carries. Throw in coming here for Indy. Blake, the right read. Guenzotti's got a pocket of space. Quickly closed down, though, by Charleston. Myers lurking at the back of the pack. Blake thought that Williams was going to be in that spot. He was not. Throw in coming here for the battery. Blake saying he touched that ball off of Segbers. And then a wry smile as he did not get the call. He was selling it oh, very well. Oh, he did well. sell it well. I, I looked at the linesman here to see... Did Blake see something I didn't? And the answer is no, he did not. But he tried. Your Central Indiana Ford dealers are a proud sponsor of Indy 11 soccer. Visit your local Ford dealer today for great deals on your favorite Ford vehicle. Arcanic. He wants to get to that left foot. This time works to distribute already a goal and an assist on the two tallies so far. Chapman Page couldn't get there. Player went down, but again, not enough to draw a whistle and a point to the spot for Ikaza. And Sean McCauley waving his charges forward. Wants this team to attack. Six matches in. How would you describe Coach McCauley's style at this point, Brad? That's aggressive going forward. I love it. Augie Williams turns and fires in. Grinwis took no chances. Lifts it up and over the bar. Corner kick coming. You know the drill by now. Brought to us by Wilson Kehoe Winningham. Yeah, the thing I love is, you know, he wants he wants any any opponent that comes in here to know that they had a, a, a battle on their hands, that the team fought, played hard, make this place a difficult place to pull points. Greenwich three clean sheets in the first six matches but really hasn't faced a, a, a huge amount of shots. The team has been so good in front of him in terms of possession, a great back line here as well. Ball sent in, back post. Gutierrez races out of there with it, but King is there to settle things for Indy. Find Schneider. Stanley couldn't clear Segbers. Schneider digs in, goes to ground, and nothing there. Both players went to the turf, and Frank Dopka says, I'm not going to reward either one of you. Yeah, and I, I like the fact that he is early in those calls. Same thing on the Ikava fall in the box here for the potential penalty kick. Immediately when players look, he's already pointing to what's going to happen. Made his mind up early. Players get a lot of confidence in a center when they're able to be that confident and that early in their decisions. Ikaza to the edge of the 18 and travel on distance, never found a teammate. Williams with the ground, not enough there. Here's Myers. Ikaza. He's got Markanik and Myers inside of the 18 now. A little more help coming through. Allen. Good movement. Dos Santos. The blast, and that one. Past the side netting goal kick coming. That goal kick taken with a select soccer ball. Select is the official match ball supplier of the USL championship and many elite leagues throughout Europe. It was us.select-sport.com for the latest select product specials and more. Select the player's choice. How good is Charleston? Jake Lacama is a really good player in this league. And he's getting a handful of minutes off the bench so far for the Charleston battery. He will come in for Diego Gutierrez once he finds his form. Look out, the batter will get even better. Uh, he, he is a 
difference maker. He's scrappy. He brings a, a spark to it, and he can finish. And you know, he served this role a little bit with Tampa Bay, where it comes in late and just changes the complexion of the game. And we're saying a statement like this more and more. He's 23 years old. It's his fifth year in the league. Debut with Red Bulls too. Spent time last year with Inter Miami in Major League Soccer but then was loaned back to the Tampa Bay Rowdies where he had 13 goals for the Rowdies in 2022. That's quite the weapon to bring in off the bench. Ball is at his feet now. King anywhere away from La Cava was a good place to put that one. Of an extended spells of possession for the battery here to start half number one than we saw for I would say a good shot or half number two than we saw in, in half number one. Yeah, and that's important when you're in your, your third match in seven, eight days. The more you can control the ball, the more you can control the pace. Ball played in. have a sub heading towards the fourth officially a matter of moments it's going to be Douglas Martinez that will join the fray for the Indy 11 and they played on Saturday did Charleston playing a nil nil draw with the newest member of the league in Rhode Island Augie Williams look at that closing speed by Archer that's exceedingly well done and then kept the ball in play oh, great play under pressure by Williams and Leland's been a good player in this league for a long time. Yeah, nice little combination between Blake and Gibson and lays it into space for a you know, guy with Augie Williams' pace. And Leland Archer just brilliantly set that up. Win so far for Charleston against New Mexico, Miami, and Louisville. Draws against North Carolina, Oakland, and Rhode Island. And they will make their debut against Rhode Island, at least in the Northeast, on July 5th. Markanik a touch, Stanley a great recovery. Then finds an outlet in Blake. By the way, we mentioned Rhode Island. They're one of two new clubs in the USL Championship as Malloy's service goes across the edge of the 18. The other quote unquote new club isn't new to us in Indianapolis at all. It's North Carolina FC. Carolina had dropped to League One for a couple of years. They won the championship last year and back up to the championship this year. That's who we'll see next in two weeks, at least at home. Myers, that took a turn off a defender. That will be a corner. Brought to us by Wilson, Kehoe, Winningham. Martinez not to the fourth official just yet. So we'll play with the same set of 22 we have currently. Not surprisingly, Malloy will send it in. And they've got a few tools in their toolbox. They've driven it to the front post. They've driven it to the 12. They've driven it to the back post. They've played short. And eight assists last year. Bending ball and Dos Santos couldn't steer it on frame. But Malloy will serve it up one more time. Schneider, Blake, Ecoba. And Ecoba's job is to wait for help. Couldn't keep it long enough. Markanich a target. Stanley did a good job to get in the way. Gwenzotti sprinting forward. Williams is onside. Gwenzotti goes down. Not enough there. Martinez has made his way to the fourth official, so Indy will get a burst of speed in their lineup when Douglas Martinez joins the next stoppage in play. Segbers will survey the field for a moment. Of course, this match brought to us by Sports Tech HQ. Indiana winning is in our DNA. For more information, visit ForTheWinners.com. It's these little moments here for Charleston where they can maintain a bit of possession. 
slow the game down a little bit. King. Back to Odell. And Odell will put that up in Eclipse territory from five days ago. How was your view of the Eclipse, by the way? It was incredible. The farm was hopping for the Eclipse. We had a few visitors. Cows, chickens, goats. Now, you know, it was interesting because you hear animals react to it, but nothing really changed. It got really quiet, but that was it. If your animals are like you, quiet is a big change. <laughs> that's, that's funny, Rick. Allen. And he and Malloy both look to create for others. Looking back post Mark Koenig. Flag goes up. Offside flag up. And now it is recognized. And we have subs in both directions that are awaiting to enter. It'll be Max Schneider that will come off as Douglas Martinez will come on. Necessity was the mother of invention last year for the Indy 11. He played wherever he was needed by Mark Lowry. In this system under Sean McCauley, what do you see Douglas Martinez's role being for this team? Well, I think especially in a moment like this, you know, you're 65 minutes into the match. He can fly, and he's a goal scorer. And so now you're looking, hey, Three matches in seven, eight days. You're going to have some fatigued legs. Can you bring in somebody fresh like this for the last 25 minutes or so that can really start to stress that back line and give you another pacey option in transition? Chris Allen exits for Charleston as Robbie Crawford comes in. Crawford has not been here as long as, say, Leland Archer, but close. This is Robbie's fifth year in Charleston. You look at Robbie. He is Scottish. Actually spent time playing for Rangers in Scotland over parts of four years. Also played in Iceland and Finland. He's been a handful of minutes type of player so far this year. Played in all of 25 minutes over four matches. He'll have his longest spell of the season here in this match. So both teams have used two subs. They've also used two substitution windows. So keep that of note with 25 minutes plus remaining. We've seen King deliver a ball like this before. Blake is wide open on the backside. Stanley. Blake is his closest target, but he likes to go for possession with Chapman Page. Good pressure here by Mark Koenig. And he was the team that dictated that press earlier in the match. Kind of backed off that a little bit here in half number two. And a throw in coming for the battery. Of course, this match is brought to us by your Central Indiana Ford Dealers, proud sponsor of the Indy 11. See the confidence that Charleston has in Malloy. Whenever they're carrying that ball forward and they get into a little bit of a jam, they get space compressed on them, immediately they step on the ball, turn and look, and he's always underneath the ball. Markanik. Blake coming to assist as he works his way around wow. Gibson. Now Sekbers into the mix. Segbers. It's going to be a, a corner kick. Like Indy was saying that ball was across the byline as Segbers took it towards the six. Everybody kind of turned and looked at the assistant referee and waited for a signal, and it never came. So it'll be a corner brought to us by Wilson, Kehoe, Winningham. goal kick coming in the 11 bench asking for a push that frankly you saw I saw from our location a yellow away from the play issued to Aiden Stanley so Stanley shown yellow as Callum Chapman page was
Stanley his first yellow of the season. Chapman Page went flying. And Stanley shown yellow for th that second contact. He felt right. he had been fouled before that. And did Ikaza sell that one? Absolutely he did. But did Stanley create contact that was unnecessary? That's a true statement, too. So third yellow. Jack Blake has one, too. There have not been many looks for the Indy 11 in half number two. King digs in to keep that ball in play. Can Guenzotti do the same? Great Excellent touch. touch. Player goes down. Foul outside of the 18, but a foul in a dangerous spot. Restart coming here. Malloy commits the foul. What are you dialing up here from the side of the 18, Brad? Uh, you're putting some big bodies on that backside. You're putting a ball up in the air that they can get. You know, this is one of those ones that... Uh, Dispay against afraid. Who was what was the, the keep it was the keeper that made those two great saves Dispay Rakestraw come on. I know I know you got to give me a little more, you know, Detroit Detroit was Steinwasher make those two great saves Put it up there Give Dispay an opportunity and have him go Blast that ball on frame. You know, I missed the last home game, bro. I didn't have that, you know, connectivity. You had to watch it, though. It's two weeks ago. Lots happened since then. Stanley sends it in. That's a flick. Great flick. Back oh post and Chapman Page could not steer it home. It went to the side netting. It did not go to the back of the net. The combination sublime for the Indy 11 just couldn't deliver. In terms of the final product, great serve, great flick, and a great backside run. It's there. Chapman Page looking for his first goal since last August for the Indy 11. Of course, that's not necessarily his job. Aaron pass by Charleston, throw in coming for the Indy 11 tonight's match, brought to us by the Denny Companies, tearing down the past so you can build the future. Yannick on those goal clearances, testing out the new lights here at the mic. Andy on the road next week for two. An open cup in Chicago against Chicago Fire, two of MLS Next Pro. And they're at the lovely new complex in Colorado Springs to play the switchbacks. We will not have television coverage of that one. Brad and I next will have Indy and North Carolina. Oh, the history between those two teams. A lot of firsts. Well, we, first for this we mentioned last night or that yesterday was the 10th anniversary of match number one. Who did Indy play? The Carolina Railhawks. Of course, now known as North Carolina FC. Indy's first win came against the artist formerly known as the Railhawks later that season and of course the 2016 NASL Spring Championship coming against the Railhawks in this building foul whistled against the Indy 11. It's Ikaza that has been the constant source of consternation for the Indy 11. Tyler Gibson arguing his case wearing the captain's armband for Indy. Another uh, another thing we touched on in the keys to the game is how quick and technical they are, and they draw a lot of fouls because they're willing to bring that ball down in pressure. They're willing to take guys one-on-one -on -one off the dribble. That leads to moments like this. Koenig is leaking out wide here for Charleston. And it's opening up a, a lane to Ikaza in the middle. Headed but not close to frame by the battery. It's match still there for the taking for either side. Experience, comfort in downtown Indianapolis 
You visit Hyatt Place and Hyatt House, downtown Indy. My hometown was fortunate enough to be represented in the IHSAA Girls Basketball State Finals at the end of February. And I think half of Lanesville was inside of Hyatt Place and Hyatt House downtown <laughs> Indianapolis. We had a heck of a family reunion in the lobby. Your little town has before. had a lot of athletic achievements in the last couple of years. Especially since I left, absolutely. The quality of athletes got significantly better since I left town 30 years ago. Great ball. And there's Malloy to erase it. Stanley was one of the many off-season new acquisitions for the Indy 11. He was brought in right as the coaching change happened. He's been a great find for the staff. So dangerous going forward. He just bends that ball in behind the back line perfectly, just out of reach of the keeper. King clears the 18. Ikaza finds Crawford. Crawford in. Dees Pay stepped in the way of Yannick Odell. Dees Pay will do that again as and Odell had a beat on that ball, but Dees Pay can't take the time to look behind him. He's got to make the play he thinks is right. It leads to a corner brought to us by Wilson Kehoe Winningham. And Indy on the front foot for most of half number one. They've been in more of a defensive posture for the better part of half number two. Wow. Beautiful flick, and it's a goal. Charleston in front, 3-2. Well, you just can't give a team like that that many opportunities from the corner flag. Indy is once again chasing the game here at Carroll Stadium. It's a great serve and a terrific run from Graham Smith to get into that front post pocket and be able to get a touch on that ball and drive it into a dangerous space inside the six. So Malloy sends it in. And that's off of Mackin King. That took a deflection off a couple of different players, and that'll be the second time this season that Indy has put an own goal in the back of the net in front of the home fans. Indy equalized the last time they trailed. We'll be charged with doing that again. Three substitutions available for the Indy 11. Dees Pay taken away. Mark Hanek streaming forward. Mark Hanek. Odell the save. And now with numbers going the other direction. Just King's ball was, it was the right idea. Right. Just, just put too much on it. Right. Martinez had timed that perfectly. He was on side, but that ball's a little more diagonal. That's a threatening moment. Big save, critical moment. You got Markanek coming in on a breakaway. Red hot at this point in the season. That ball goes in. It's over. Ben Mines is going to make his Indy 11 debut. Foul going to be called. Card going to be shown against the Charleston Battery. But Smith... He just played an integral role in putting the battery in front. That is going to be shown yellow. So Blake will stand over this one. A couple of attractive options. You got Macaulay King out to the right. You might be able to get Doug, Dougie Martinez's feet. Blake looking back post. Dees Pay couldn't get there. 
Opportunity goes by the wayside for the Indy 11. Mines will come on. And he'll be replacing Tyler Gibson. So Gibson will exit in the 79th minute. Mines grew up playing in the Red Bulls system. Made a handful of appearances for Red Bulls at the MLS level. Spent last season, beginning of this season, with Miami FC. He'll turn 24 next month. And he has played at this level or higher now for nine years. Mines charges into action for Indy. Chapman Page. After the effort by Guinzotti. Stanley. And he and Mines were teammates a season ago. They have a good knowledge of each other. Not surprised those two link up immediately. And I got a few Miami Indy connections. Callum Chapman Page. Correct. Mines. Afemu. Yeah, there Stanley. Are, there are three on the field right now. Can watch the match. Turn on Sirius XM FC 157 North America's only 24 7 source for engaging soccer talk, including USL All Access Tuesdays at 7 o'clock Eastern Time. Live matches from the USL Championship, Major League Soccer, Premier League, and more. All on Sirius XM FC 157 and the new Sirius XM app. Throw in coming here for Charles. So now the battery will slow the game down yeah. significantly. Trying to protect their fourth win in seven matches so far this season. And to continue their unbeaten streak. Wenzati. Martinez. Great touch. Works his way around Dos Santos, but couldn't clear him with the pass. Wenzati the target. And Dos Santos unable to track that one down. Williams. Blake, the bounding ball that oh. unfortunately Ikoba could not get much behind that header. Great opportunity as that ball's coming across the back post. You've got bodies on the back side. So Greenwich has to has to pay attention to it and get a little flick from Ikoba in the middle. Blake did a good job of kind of using that turf to his advantage. Just to bounce that ball in, but Akoba just couldn't get much on it. My goodness, if it gets through to Mines. LaCava just poked away by Chapman Page. Again, Martinez, those fresh legs, that great speed. Knocks it forward for Augie Williams. Williams couldn't get much on it. He would love to get one against his old team. Foul against the Indy 11. Macca King, the guilty party. And yeah, you asked what Martinez brings to it. It's that. It's that quick opportunity, that quick ball in transition that allows him to use his pace. Tonight's match brought to part by 450 North Brewing. Innovation and creativity through libations. Five goals allowed against Lou City, three to nine against Charleston. Again, those are two offensively gifted teams. But goals against a problem so far for the Indy 11 this year. Brad, what are you seeing from this group defensively right now? That's one of the things that we talked about early on is the defensive discipline. You take a look at some 
some missed opportunities to track runners. You look at, you know, and the Marcanic goal here is not stepping up and pressing the ball. Um, you look at the, the game winner with Detroit as the center back brings the ball up 30, 40 yards, and you foul them just outside the box. It just needs to be a little bit sharper, a little bit more disciplined defensively. Mines. Good ball. Blake. Stanley is on. Back post. Williams just lifted away. had to play that when that was off one of his teammates Stanley Williams that'll be a throw in for the Indy 11 yeah, the whole series well defended you have Mines and Stanley that created a great opportunity here on that on the left side and the battery were equal and answered every one of those ball movements with great pressure defensively Mines trying to find Williams ball headed down Gwenzani Oh, my goodness. When Zadi already had one tonight. Hasn't completed the brace just yet. Another look. Just how good was the opportunity. It was splendid. Great ball by Chapman Page. When Zadi would like to have that one back. Third and final substitution, Josh Drack, but to make his way to the fourth official for the battery. Mark Koenig was offside. Myers was not. Myers trying to find a window and does. Myers gets the fourth of the night for the battery. And the defensive problems continue to pile on for the Indy 11. The Golden Boot winner in MLS Next Pro a season ago. It's his third goal of the season. That's second best on the battery. And it looks like they're going to pull seven points out of nine this week in USL Championship play. It's a great finish. He fights through a physical Callum Chapman page, winds up on the other end of it, gets him wrong footed, and then just. Buries it on the top shelf. Myers played collegially both High Point and Rutgers. Fantastic finish. Pair of substitutions now for Charles. We mentioned Drack. He's in for Marcanic, so that's defense for offense. But also Matthew Dean, young man that's on an academy deal, will come in here. And that goal by Myers will be his last touch of the match. Dean will be just simply a young pair of legs. Asked to, hey, go chase the ball, kid. Charleston sitting on a two goal lead. We'll do the restart again here for the Indy 11. Of course, the match brought to us by the Keystone Group, specializing in transformation developments, construction management, and investments. A lot of fans starting to make their way to the exits on this beautiful night. Ball finds Dean immediately. And then Dean finds the bench as he and Stanley collide with each other. No one coming for the Indy 11. Yeah, there'll be a, a little bit of time added on to this. But you got to get the ball forward. You got to just see if you can pull one back. By the way, Dean making his debut for the season tonight. And Grinwis will buy a few extra seconds by going to the ground. Lindy has given up a goal in every match. They have given up at least two in four of their six matches so far. They have now given up nine in their last two matches. That is a problem.
Koba. That is first in the 11 goal earlier. This is for the foul here. And not much time to reflect on this one for Indy. Because you've got an open cup match coming up on Wednesday. Against a team that Indy has seen during the preseason right. and beat in Chicago Fire 2. And you want that. You know, you don't want to sit on losses very long. And it's an Indy team that looking for that breakthrough moment in the Open Cup. They beat the Michigan Stars of Nisa last year before losing to the Columbus Crew. Indy has never won back-to-back -back matches in Open Cup play. Well, before you win two, you've got to win the first one. That's at the Chicago Fire. But again, there is less of an opportunity to be a giant killer. We're just eight MLS teams in the competition this year. But frankly, a better chance for all championship clubs to advance because there are only eight MLS teams in the competition this year. Of course, this match is brought to us by Johnson Controls. Johnson Controls, the power behind your mission. Four minutes of added time remain in this match. Four minutes to not score once, but twice. And King will be shown a yellow. As he and Drac got tied up behind the play. Is that, that little final touch is off a bit right now. He had a great ball into Martinez. And it winds up being a ball that you have to defend. Next chance for the home fans. See the Indy 11 will be in two weeks when they take on North Carolina FC. were to advance, by the way, out of the next round of the Open Cup, as you see the clear and obvious foul committed by Macca King. If Indy advances past Chicago Fire 2, the next Open Cup dates, the same dates that Charleston would join the competition, would be May 7th or May 8th. Throw in coming for Indy. Two teams will see each other on August the 2nd. Patriots point. Blake's ball does stay in play. Shocking, that thing looked like it was carrying out. And it will still be a goal kick coming. Let's thank our friends, the Morales Group, staffing agencies, fine jobs. We build futures. Pierman doing it again. Whether it's at Detroit City before their USL championship days, he was the head coach before Trevor James was the man in charge of Detroit City. But obviously we have seen Ben in this league at both Memphis and Charleston. He has been successful at both stops. What makes his teams so tough to beat? You know, I, there is a, a different quality. There's a different confidence. They know. I mean, you, you look at that. You know, three, four minute stretch where Indy goes from a goal down to two up and they're unfazed and they respond before the halftime. It's just, they just, he brings a level of confidence and championship feel to the clubs he's with. Blake, great ball. back post. Koba just couldn't get there in time. It's a great ball. Just enough traffic in front of him. Barring something of the miraculous, Indy is going to pull just four points from their first six matches. And again, they have been, for the most part, against really good competition. That's going to be an uphill climb already. At the conclusion of this one, Indy will be 11 points back of the Charleston battery a month into the season. Yeah, it's early. And you, you talk about the challenges and the quality of opponents you've got, but... This roster, this this team is on par with that. The 
Chinese pay careening through traffic for the Indy 11. And a foul is given. This dates back to kind of LaCava's contact on Dee's pay at midfield. Good ball. Stanley. Plays it across. Great save from his backside that time by Goodwiss. Unreal. I'm not sure it's going to affect the final outcome in Guenzotti. A little frustration there playing through the Charleston player. Going after the ball. And that will likely, next touch of the game, probably likely be the last at this one. Sekber's not happy with Guenzotti's effort through his teammates. Going to be a Charleston side that will take all three points back home to the low country tonight. Malloy, the worst for the effort. I'm not sure I could read Aaron's lips. I get the general gist of what he was saying there. I'm, I'm just shocked he went down. I don't think that guy feels pain. After a nil-nil draw against Rhode Island, seven against both halves of LIP AFC and that's that no need for further activity Indy scores two. Charleston doubles that and Gwenzotti and Malloy probably are best served going in opposite right. directions at this point Let's call it a day fellas kind of reflective of these two teams right now because Charleston continues to go up Indy still trying to find its way early in the season. 4-2 the final score in this one. Arcanic gets his sixth of the season. Myers gets his third. Ikaza his first. And the dreaded guy with initials OG got one tonight for the battery as well. Ikoba a goal. Gwenzani won as well. And the conversations continuing at midfield. Our conversation continues as well. We're back in a moment on My Indy TV and ESPN Plus. Every place has a purpose, and the people who inhabit those places have their own reasons for being there. The last thing on their minds should be concerns about the safety of the places they are in. When it comes to security and safety for all the places that matter, Dormacaba offers a seamless flow of integrated solutions that allow people to move securely about their daily lives. Because the places that matter to you matter to us. For over a century, Indiana has been the destination for sports innovation and the state where champions are crowned. Now, we're entering a new era with Sports Tech HQ, a place that inspires innovation and invests in entrepreneurs who are changing the game, one startup at a time. Welcome to the crossroads of sports and technology. Sports Tech HQ, home of the game changers. Find it. Try it. Paint it. Love it. Find it, try it, paint it, 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 love it, love it, love it. Tonight's match is presented by Community Health Sports Medicine. Exceptional care simply delivered. And by your Central Indiana Ford dealers. Your Central Indiana Ford dealers are a proud sponsor of Indy 11 Soccer. Visit your local Ford dealer today for great deals on your favorite Ford vehicle. Post game is underway here at Michael A. Carroll Track and Soccer Stadium. Better known as the Mike Ben Pierman having his post game talk with his team at the middle of the field. The Indy 11 players made the rounds of the Brickyard Battalion. They are now heading back to the locker room. We'll talk to a player or two, and we are kind enough to be joined now by Aiden Stanley. While it wasn't the result he was hoping for, a 4-2 loss to the battery was not due to a lack of effort from Aiden. Aiden, just your thoughts as to how things played out tonight. Um, yeah, you know, it was, it was a tough game. 
Uh, first half, it was a battle coming into the game. It, you know, it was back to back to nil nil. Um, and I don't think we came out as sharp or as hard as we wanted to. Uh, we knew they were a team that works hard, and uh, um, we failed to match that coming out into the second half. Um, we can't hang our heads, though. That's the only thing I can say now. You can't hang your head. We have to keep going, stay together. Uh, hard times breed tough people, and tough people breed good times. So hopefully we can reach that, you know? The process of gelling together, again, you were a, a, an off-season acquisition, uh, kind of a mixture of, of new faces and, and, and returning faces. What's the camaraderie and the connection like on this Indy 11 team right now, Aiden? Yeah, we're together. Um, that doesn't mean we're not frustrated. Uh, expectations were high for every single one of us uh, as an individual and a collective. And, you know, obviously the results aren't there yet. And the biggest key word there is yet. Um, it's still early, you know. We got to start rolling. That's definitely, you know, the, the true. That's the, uh, that's the truth. We got to start rolling. Um, but we can't hang our heads, you know. We, can't, we can be frustrated, but we can't turn our backs on one another. We can't turn our backs on one another because we're a team, you know. That's the only way we can get out of it. Love that attitude, love that confidence, love that drive. Is that something that permeates the entire culture in that locker room? Yeah, you know, um, that's what every team strives for uh, is togetherness. Um, you know, it's easy to say that when good times are around, but when tough times happen, you know, that's that's when it shows, you know. And uh, actions speak louder than words, so. Well, these these last two matches you've played uh, against two of the top strikers in the league in Mark Hanick and Harris. How different is your preparation when you're coming against guys that are that hot at that moment? Um, you know, it, it doesn't start. Um, it doesn't start on, you know, Thursday or Friday. It starts on Monday. Uh I like to try to focus on myself and focus on what we can do, you know. We let ourselves down. Aiden, we'll let you go at that, but you know you put 100 minutes there in, into, the, uh, into the legs. Thanks for the time tonight. Good luck in the Open Cup match on Wednesday. Thank you. Aiden Stanley joining us. We'll hear from Coach McCauley. Come in a matter of moments. Your thoughts about what Aiden had to say. Love it. I love it. You love to hear, you know, there's, there's – you know, disappointment after a game like after the result like this, but to come out and, and have that kind of positivity that we're staying together, we're continuing to work, we know we got it, we just have to turn the corner. Love hearing that from players. Let's hear from the head coach now in Sean McCauley, who joins us now. Sean, I know you're disappointed with the result tonight. Overall impressions as to what you saw this evening? Yeah, I thought, um, you know, we uh, probably deserved what we got. I thought we were a little bit soft in our defending. Um, something we're going to have to work on. Um, we had some chances again, like we always do, but, you know, at this moment in time, we're letting too many in the other end, and, and that's got to change. Again, it's, it's, it's a situation where you can't spend too much time thinking about this one because you got to play Open Cup in, in, in terms of midweek. Your thoughts about what that quick turnaround means for you guys heading into Wednesday night? Yeah, we've just got to prepare for the next game. So the players have got to recover, and they've got to get back on track, and... You know, it's a huge, huge game for us, the Open Cup. You know, it means a lot to us, and we want to progress in it. Um, but we've got to tighten up defensively because that was pretty poor tonight. So, you know, the result uh, is obviously disappointing, but you take a look at a positive from this, and it's the response that the team had shown once they went down a goal and that, that not just a quick goal from Tega, but then the immediate uh, response after that with Gwenzati to go up to one. Talk a little bit about what it is in the resolve of the players and the resolve of this team to respond like that. Well, I think that's, you know, credit to them for that because at, at the time when they went 1-0 down, I don't think they deserve that either. So credit to them for coming back into the game and, and getting back in front. And that's when you've got to got to hurt teams. You've got to, you've got to use the ball better and make sure you're solid defensively. And, you know, even at 2-2 two, two at half-time, I thought we'd come out in the second half and, you know, we should have overpowered them, but but we were soft and, and you know, we, we got what we deserved in the end. Yeah, great finish by Tega. How important is it that he gets going for you? Yeah, but he's a good player, you know, and, you know, we need that, you know, presence up front. He's, he's got some good ability and, you know, I'm pleased he's got his goal because, personally, he needed to get off the mark and I'm, I'm really pleased for him. Sean, thanks for the time after a tough loss. We appreciate it. We'll see you in a couple of weeks. Thank you. Sean McCauley, again, the head coach of the Indy 11, kind enough to join us. And Tega Akoba will join us in a matter of moments. Before we talk to Tega, you thought what we saw from him tonight getting his first Indy 11 goal. I thought this was the most impactful he's, he's been. I think, you know, he's a terrific player. He's a you know, big body, tough guy to move off the ball. And, you know, there's some possession things that you can have around a target like that. But he's also got some pace, and we saw today sure. a nice little finishing ability. Well, we saw the skill keeping the ball at his feet 
feet through traffic that impressed me as well, Brad. Right, and he's a guy that's easy to find. You know, when you have the ball and you're looking up and you see him up there, you say, okay, I got it. Here it is. We're going to deliver the ball into your feet. So, again, on loan from Portland Timbers. Again, one of three current players on loan deals from Major League Soccer sides. Two from the Portland Timbers. Backup goalkeeper Hunter Salt uh, is in that mix as well. Tega joins us now. Tega, it's Greg and Brad. And, again, we had a chance really to kind of talk you know, since you made your way to Indianapolis. So, pleasure to meet you, if you will. But just kind of your thoughts as to how things played out for you and your team tonight. <clears throat> uh, yeah, I think, you know, tonight was obviously very unfortunate. I think it was it was great, you know, being able to start alongside the boys that I've been like training with every every week, week in and week out. We've definitely put in the work, and it's, we're kind of struggling to reap the rewards. But, you know, I'm I'm very confident that they'll start coming. So even though tonight's kind of disappointing, you know, for me it's just a matter of looking forward to the next game and just moving on and continuing to grow and develop alongside these guys. The win didn't come for you tonight, but that first Indy 11 goal did. Take us through kind of how it played out and and, and what you saw leading up to the finish. Yeah, uh, you know, I kind of I, I checked into the pocket and kind of and received the ball. I noticed I had some space, so I turned and, and I looked up and I had some space to take a shot with my left, and I just I let it rip. And uh, just seeing the ball go in the net was very it was very uh, satisfying. It was a good moment for me, you know, being my first goal. It was it was a great it was a great feel. So go back to that because as a as a goal scorer, getting that first one then oftentimes just opens the door and floodgates. So now that that one's behind you, how much more confidence? How much more belief are you having up top? You know, it, it, it really helps a lot. You know, even in the game after I scored that goal, I started to you know just dribble a little more, feel a little confident with the ball with at my feet, and you know I, I felt like I was able to be more of a threat and also more of an asset to our team. Yeah, I think there's a few, when you start talking about assets, there's a few different things that you bring uh, that maybe a traditional striker doesn't, you know, as, as far as the way you play. It's big, it's physical. It's like a center back up top that can finish. Talk a little bit about the uniqueness that you bring in this striker position. I think the, the big goal for me was to be unique, you know, and that's what I work towards every week. And, you know, at Portland, I've been working really hard to become a, a hold-up striker. And I think it's great to be here because I'm also realizing that there's other parts of my game that I can really refine to help me be a very well-rounded striker. Well, let's talk about kind of off-the-pitch mixing here as well because, again, we tend to think in just soccer terms, this is real life. You know, you've been with the Portland Timbers, and now you've been here for about six weeks. What is the adjustment, not just to playing with a new team, but living in Indianapolis been like for you so far? Well, personally, I love Indianapolis. You know, I grew up in Bettendorf, Iowa, so it reminds me kind of a home. It's a little mix between the quiet life and the, the, the busy life. But um, I, I definitely I love it here. And even though it's been uh, it's been a long six weeks, I feel like I've been able to get very adjusted and I feel very comfortable with everybody here. I think it's safe to say Indy's a bit more like the Quad Cities than Portland would be. So <laughs> I, I can feel, I can get why you feel a little comfortable here in Indianapolis. Tega, congrats on the goal tonight, and uh, we'll talk to you again real soon. Thanks for the time after the match. Thank you. Have Te a good one. You got it. Tega Koba, kind enough to join us, and thanks to he, Aiden Stanley, and Sean McCauley for joining us in such a quick fashion after the match. We greatly appreciate that. Yeah, and I love the, the thought process there, you know, too. Here he's he's serving a lot as a target. He, he's, he's a natural target, but then to come here and recognize recognize that there's other parts of his game he can take players on he can and work down the line and serve a ball across he almost got one off his head in the box as well so I, I do think this move into India is allowing some of the versatility he brings to come out so that will end kind of our player interview portion of the broadcast but still plenty of the post game show left to go highlights scores stats and more as we're with you until the bottom of the hour as you're watching Indy 11 soccer on my Indy TV and ESPN plus This copyrighted telecast of the United Soccer League Championship cannot be retransmitted, rebroadcast, or reproduced without the expressed written consent of the United Soccer League Championship. Find it. Try it. Paint it. Love it. Find it. Try it. Paint it, love it, find it, try it, paint it, love it. Find it, try it, paint it, love it, find it, try it, paint it, love it, love it, love it, love it. So I had no job, no car, nobody to watch my son. And when I finally got a job interview, it was a half hour away. I was just 
stuck, you know? Then one of my friends told me to call Care Source. I was like, uh, my health insurance company? We helped Becky with her resume, arranged daycare for her son, and even set up a ride to the interview that helped her get the job. Care Source is so much more than health insurance. The Indy 11 are announcing a new signing to their squad. We can now confirm it's Max from Williams Comfort Air and Mr. Plumber. Max clearly has some training to do to get into shape by game day. Soccer skills and service you can rely on from a team you can trust. Both essential for a winning performance. Post-game coverage continues on. Fans of all ages enjoyed the atmosphere, the number of goals, not just the result for the home team. Unfortunately, Charleston 4-2 winners over the Indy 11. We got six goals to show you. Let's get to our post-game highlights. And again, Indy controlled the first 50 minutes, but the first strike of the game belonged to Emilio Icaza for the Charleston battery. Yeah, Icaza pushes it out to Mar Markinic and makes a run into the box. It just isn't picked up. But Indy, when they have given up that first goal all season, they answer Akoba, his first of the Indy 11 uniform. Yeah, this was a little bit misplayed by the center back, and Ikoba takes advantage of it. He takes away the near post, which is the one you want to give the keeper the shot on. Ikoba makes him pay. Minutes later, Aiden Stanley creates. Sebastian Guenzotti gets the goal, gives Stanley the assist. Yeah, Stanley is just brilliant at delivering that ball into pockets that strikers love. 72nd goal for Seba in the championship. That's tied for sixth in league history. But Mark Koenig, he now has six in seven matches this year. Yeah, brilliant finish. Take nothing away from that, but you got three players that are just applying soft pressure, didn't get enough to the ball to disrupt the shot. 2-2 two, two going to halftime. Not as many chances for either side. Simply put, Charleston cashed in theirs. Indy did not. Yeah, there are a couple of unfortunate. You got a couple of great looks and some, some great opportunities and just weren't able to tuck it in the net. That's one of two that probably should have gone in the second half. Here's the one that was the game winner, the own goal that ricocheted off of Maka King, who is in for Eunice Budati. That service did not go through. You'll see one look even though this ball here, not bad for Makoba, there was one more ball for Sebastian Guenzotti right here that Seba would like to have back that probably changes the outcome of this game, or at least changes the tenor late. Yeah, you look at the ball that Chapman Page, this ball here from Guenzotti, either of those, and MD Myers, unbelievable, just wrong foot, Callum Chapman Page, and then tip of the hat to the shot. Again, Charleston's leading goal scorer from last year now plays for the Indy 11. But the combination of Markanik, Myers, and again, they'll get more from Jake LaCobb as the season goes along. They're going to be just fine offensively in the low country. And Conway, you know, they, they've got players. He's they've got played. so much talent up front. Yeah, Conway was a fantastic player in our league for Atlanta United, too. So here's a look. Possession tilted towards Charleston. More shots on goal for the Indy 11. Really anything kind of jump off the page for there in terms of the way the stats line up well you you like the volume of shots you like the shots on goal you know the conversion rate is not bad you know the problem is and, and it's what sean talked about it's it's the defensive discipline our post-game stats brought to us by sports tech hq how do you work on said defensive discipline when you basically have maybe one full training session monday or tuesday Knowing you're playing a match again coming up on Wednesday night. Well, you're not coaching U14 here. I mean, these are these are guys that understand the game. You got high tactical IQ. So some of this stuff, you just say, hey, we got to this. This is the focus. This is you got to track the runs. You got to press. You got to make sure that the balls are are, are obstructed. It, it can't be that there's soft pressure on the ball. And you got to have cover behind it. Let's get our Schlage lockdown play of the game. Four goals scored by the Charleston Battery. Here's one they did not score. Best save for Yannick Odell of the night. Breakaway opportunity here that Yannick Odell was able to parry away. Yeah, and a great couple of touches from Markanik to put himself into a position to be able to break through the back line. And you give him nine more of these, he's going to score nine of them. 
Still a pretty good week for Mark Koenig. He scored three times over the course of the last five days and a good chunk of friends and family here to watch him play as well. Charleston 4, Indy 2. More postgame coverage from the mic comes your way in a matter of moments on this gorgeous Saturday night in downtown Indy. Everything good but that final score as you're watching on my Indy TV. Find it. Try it. Paint it. Love it. 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 Love it. Love it. Indy 11 has the latest merchandise. Shirts, jerseys, sweatshirts, hats, and more. All at Indy11.com slash shop. At Indiana Members Credit Union, we're invested in more than just your finances. We're invested in your future, the future of your family, the well-being of the community you live in, and in those who dream big. Until those dreams become a reality, any bank can give you a loan or open an account. At IMCU, we care about more than just dollars and cents. We care about doing things that make sense. And investing in you makes good sense to us. Indy 11 theme nights are out of this world. Star Wars, Marvel, Dinos, and more. Plus charity and heritage nights. Get your tickets now at Indy11.com. Moving along rather rapidly in our postgame show on My Indy TV and ESPN Plus. Again, Indy now has three losses to the teams that are in the top three spots in the Eastern Conference standings. It is Charleston that stands alone. Louisville was off tonight. Detroit City's off this weekend as well. So Charleston has 15 points through seven matches. Lou City, 12 through five. Detroit, 12 through four. Here's what's coming up next. And what you will notice is a good amount of matches that are on the road at Chicago Fire 2. Again, that is open cup play. If Indy wins that, we'll slide one more match there in the middle between Monterey Bay and the Miami FC. Our next broadcast on My Indy TV is when North Carolina comes in. First time these teams will have seen each other in a number of years, April 27th. They get a North Carolina team that always will have a place in the fans of Indy 11 in their hearts. We'll talk more about that a couple of weeks from now. More post-game coverage comes your way next. As you're watching Indy 11 Soccer on My Indy TV. It's very true that it takes a village to raise a child. And when it comes to my healthcare village at Community Health Network, it's all nestled right in my phone. Access in healthcare is the ability to be connected with your provider and ask a question when you need it. I feel like when I'm meeting with a community nurse practitioner or doctor, they're tuned in to what is going on with me and the way that they can serve me best. AES Indiana is dedicated to providing you with smart energy solutions that power our lives. Our energy efficiency programs help you save energy and money from rebates on lighting and smart thermostats to appliance pickup and recycling you can take advantage of cleaner more cost-effective energy solutions right here right now ipl is now aes indiana we are accelerating the future of energy together
Every place has a purpose, and the people who inhabit those places have their own reasons for being there. The last thing on their minds should be concerns about the safety of the places they are in. When it comes to security and safety for all the places that matter, Dormacaba offers a seamless flow of integrated solutions that allow people to move securely about their daily lives. Because the places that matter to you matter to us. Back for a final time in downtown Indianapolis this evening, Charleston 4, Indy 11 2. Brad, final thoughts, if you will, on this one. It's a little bit of frustration. You know, you take a look at 15 goals in six matches is a, is tough. It's tough to overcome. You know, it's two and a half goals a game. That means you got to score three to pull three points. That's a tough ask. Again, it's, it needs to be fixed quickly. Obviously, there's not a lot of time on the training pitch this week. You got to go to Chicago. You bus up Tuesday, play Wednesday. You bus back Wednesday night. You're flying out Thursday, maybe Friday to get to Colorado and, and it's, it seems the, that's been kind of the open cup luck for the Indy 11. You know, those, those matches have not fit in there well, but you've got no choice. You need a couple of matches where you're looking to pull kind of three points in there in the open cup, but you need to get a couple of W's this week if you're Indy. Right, and, and in these moments, I'd rather have a defensive problem I have to fix than offensive. Offensive is creative. It's rhythm. There certain, needs to be a certain flow to it. Defense is decision. We're going to track. We're going to press. Brad we're going to tackle. I, Brad and I will be fans for the next two matches. We are back for North Carolina FC on April the 27th. We hope you join us then. For Brad and our entire production crew behind the scenes, this is Greg Rakestraw. Good night from Indianapolis. Charleston Battery, the better of it on Star Wars night. They win it four goals to two. Thanks for joining us for Indy 11 Soccer. Over a century, Indiana has been the destination for sports innovation and the state where champions are crowned. Now, we're entering a new era with Sports Tech HQ, a place that inspires innovation and invests in entrepreneurs who are changing the game, one startup at a time. Welcome to the crossroads of sports and technology. Sports Tech HQ, home of the game changers. So I had no job, no car, nobody to watch my son. And when I finally got a job interview, it was a half hour away. I was just stuck, you know? Then one of my friends told me to call CareSource. I was like, uh, my health insurance company? We helped Becky with her resume, arranged daycare for her son, and even set up a ride to the interview that helped her get the job. CareSource is so much more than health insurance. The main part of my job is definitely listening. People deserve transparency. I don't want the financial part to be something that stops or hinders a patient from having the health care that they need. I try to treat each person like they're my mom or my grandmother, my daughter, my husband. I want them to know that they are not just another phone call for us. And it's very rewarding to know that I can provide peace of mind. AES Indiana is dedicated to providing you with smart energy solutions that power our lives. Our energy efficiency programs help you save energy and money. From rebates on lighting and smart thermostats to appliance pickup and recycling, you can take advantage of cleaner, more cost-effective energy solutions right here, right now. IPL is now AES Indiana. We are accelerating the future of energy together.